to everybody to be back. And uh, now it will be the presentation uh, of uh, Anne-Marie Moigne. So we continue with the presentation of uh, uh, Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle. And she will talk about the places and fauna assemblage. And of course, continuing what Christiane had said before, she will talk about the example of the Comte de l'Arago. Thank you very much. And my hello everybody. Uh, so I will uh, speak about this uh, famous uh, fauna from uh, Middle uh, Pleistocene, from the beginning uh, half uh, Middle Pleistocene, and um, we also uh, try to explain something about uh, what we can do with the uh, fauna uh, in a, in such a, a site, uh, Ashelian site. Um, so just uh, what uh, um, Christian Perenou uh, explained you uh, just uh, some minutes uh, uh, before, uh, but uh, just to remember some dates, some uh, dates, uh, and uh, to um, see we have a, a very uh, sick um, remplissage filling. And uh, in this case, of course, we have a, a, a succession of different um, weather. Uh, in this uh, south of uh, France, uh, not far from the Mediterranean area, but not far from the Pyrenean uh, mountains. So just uh, to have a look and uh, geomorphological evidence is very important, of course, for the, for the man and uh, also for uh, animals. It's uh, just to explain you that this area is um, like a, like a migration way, so we can find uh, a lot of uh, animals, uh, large animals, but micro mammals, birds, rats, and many many things. Uh, a large uh, uh, list of fauna. To go to the carnivore, we will speak about uh, different species. And uh, in this case, we can uh, observe that all these species are, in fact, new species for the lower, uh, for the middle Pleistocene. Um, we can see this uh, famous uh, Canismus varensis probably um, very um, evaluate uh, um, canis, uh, wolf, uh, kuon, kuon priscus. We don't know exactly before this time, so we will try to understand why. Some uh, vulpes, uh, fox, an arctic fox, Pantera, lion and or lion or tigris, we actually not know very well, but uh, panther, uh, jaguar, and um, lynx, um, aha, bears. This is an old one. We know him uh, one million years ago, and um, it's. Uh, the end, more or less, the end of this uh, Ursus de Ningeri, but it is a real um, good species to, to, to date this site. But Ursus arctos, it means uh, brown bear, is already uh, arrived uh, in this uh, area. The Herbivores are also quite interesting because we can see this uh, Cervus elaphus. Actually, it's a, a real Cervus elaphus. 
but uh, with a few uh, antlers at the end, at the top of the of the uh, antlers, a few um, tines, 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 probably. Um, it means it's still a little bit uh, ancient and uh, uh, not so evaluated that we can see uh, later in second part of the Middle Paleolithic. Uh, Dama Roberti, which is a very big one, uh, who disappeared Middle uh, Paleolithic, Middle uh, Pleistocene, excuse me. Uh, reindeer. Reindeer is very important because we just uh, know in the German uh, sites from the more or less the same age. Uh, Emitragus Bonali, this is very important because he's also a real good uh, species to, to understand what is uh, this uh, the specificity of this uh, first part of the Middle Pleistocene. Ovis Amon Antiqua is very important also because this species is not very well known in the, in the other side from the same period. We have a little bit in the north of Italy, the same age, more or less, and in the Massif Central, in the center of uh, France, but it's very, very rare. And uh, this uh, muskox, old one and uh, not so evaluated, bison, and the huge in filling of the of the Arago cave is uh, nice because we can see um, a change um, between first Shutonsaki, you can see in uh, Isernia uh, in a few days, but uh, we, we it's replaced with uh, Bison Priscus, and Bison Priscus will be the bison, everybody knows, in uh, upper uh, middle Pleistocene and upper Pleistocene. This one, the, I don't know, uh, ah, Ecus Montbrancis, is also the one, it's the first cavalling horse we know uh, still uh, about uh, 800,000 years here in Europe. And it uh, also a good uh, species to know that we are in the beginning of the uh, Middle Pleistocene. Stephanus, Stephanorinus emeticus, it's very important because in Isernia, by example, we have Stephanorinus unchainmensis, and now in, uh, in Arago Cave, it means in MES 14, we still have Stephanorinus emeticus. Emeticus will be uh, here uh, from all the Middle Pleistocene period. So you can see that we have some species who are really good to uh, determine the, the age of this uh, uh, stratigraphy. So just to have a look of the, all these species, but we can see that it's a really a very big diversification because we have this famous Ovis emitragus which are very um, uh, good in the rocky uh, and um, cliff and uh, this mountain specific uh, mountain around uh, the Pyrenean mountains. Um, we have this uh, Ecus, uh, Bison, and uh, we can see reindeer who like the open uh, uh, paysage, uh, landscape, excuse me. And um, we, we can see uh, this uh, sometimes Servus, um, Red Deer and uh, Raw Deer, who, who are well um, in more um, forested uh, area. So, 
you can imagine that we have not exactly the same percent of a species, and it's why uh, I will present you as Christian does just before me. I will present you the species in the different context, in the, from the base to the top. And uh, we can see that all the percent of these species are uh, not exactly the same, of course, for climatic uh, reasons, but not only, because we are clearly in a, a prehistoric uh, site. And in this prehistoric site, what is really important is that we are in an Ashelian system where the fauna has been choose, chosen choose, uh, with uh, the men or sometimes with the carnivore. And uh, so we have not exactly the same person that we can, who can exist in the area. It's not a natural trap. It's not a natural uh, site but a river or um, uh, assemblage, but it's uh, chosen and so we can see what, uh, what uh, um, happened in that time. So I make it, I present you some new beautiful photo. For the microvertebrate, we have also a long list. It could be better, but what is uh, really nice is uh, that we have only, we can see only one species which could be ancient, which can be irritated from uh, the lower, uh, early Pleistocene, is Pleomis uh, episcopalis. But all these species are new for the middle pl uh, Pleistocene. And uh, the, oh, the Rodensia, as you know, are very good uh, marker, are very good species to recognize um, um, the, and to propose a biochronological uh, uh, site of uh, biochronological. Yeah, uh, biozone for this uh, site and all sites in general. But uh, when you have the Rodentia, uh, the Soricomorpha, Chiroptera, Lagomorph, it's mean uh, all these uh, rabbits and uh, Aves, all the birds, we can have a very nice idea of the landscape on this uh, site, we can see that Okotona, which is a very nice uh, little rabbit who come from Siberia. Uh, we have also this permophile, uh, another one which is uh, not there, but uh, another one, uh, who come directly from a very Arctic uh, um, area. We can know as we have already seen with reindeer and um, uh, muskox, we can know that we are in the special, very cold um, period. The period is very cold for uh, Lagopus, also for Aves, and, so, and we have also this Arctic uh, hole which are very well uh, uh, representative of this uh, very cold area. Of course, we are on the Mediterranean area, so it's a mix with uh, um, Mediterranean species. We know in Italy, in Spain, and so on. So it's very nice to make the comparison, but most of these species are really adapted for the very cold uh, climate, and they migrate from this uh, place where they cannot uh, uh, live anymore. 
it means that we have a big uh, uh, glacial, glacial system in the north of Europe, and all these species uh, migrate towards the south. Okay, it's uh, what I want to show you uh, from these species. We can know uh, from where they are coming. Of course, they could be with some time to, to arrive to Arago Cave, as you have seen at the top west uh, of the of the of the map. Uh, so the Kuon is uh, typically uh, uh, Asiatic uh, uh, wolf, it's a red uh, wolf. Uh, Ursus, uh, Arthos, come from also uh, Arctic area. Ovisamon, come from Arctic area. This Pantera is uh, also uh, an Asiatic uh, Pantera. Muscox from the south. Uh, this uh, Arctic wolf, uh, not wolf, excuse me, uh, Arctic fox from the north, and so on, and so on. So we have this uh, large um, phase, phase hmm? yes. of uh, migration, which uh, and the result is this uh, specific association in uh, in Arago Cave. So I speak to you about uh, actually in. Uh, uh, area, yes, we have an axis in most of the of the level, and uh, it's why we can uh, uh, say that uh, it's actually in this uh, an axis we can see uh, in different level are from different uh, um, raw material. And uh, we can have quartz, quartzite, uh, uh, flintstone, uh, cornean, uh, and uh, um, uh, jasper, uh, many, many different uh, raw materials that was used uh, by this uh, man. So, as uh, uh, Christian showed you, we have uh, this chance for the biochronological uh, data and also archaeological uh, data. We have this chance that we have different level, but in this in most of the stratigraphy and at least for the ensemble uh, one number one, ensemble number two, ensemble number three, uh, most of the sediment is uh, sandy sediment, which is not is which is incompressible so we have a very well uh, um, uh, well uh, marked level we have no mixed as we can see in uh, argillus uh, or clay uh, system but some of these layers are very thick and uh, we make a very uh, long and uh, nice uh, archaeostratigraphic uh, uh, work to um, differentiate some um, occupation and to organize and to see if we have not some change. So in this case, I show you the famous, we will speak, uh, later about this level, but in this uh, um, system we can uh, uh, differentiate uh, uh, four different level, layers for this uh, soldier, which is very compact and important. And when we uh, work about uh, the species, we are in these uh, four different uh, uh, stratigraphy. Uh, stratigraphical uh, subunit. No? Uh, we can see that uh, the pink one it's mostly uh, servus, and the uh, black one it's mostly muscox. So we can have this uh, very thick um, uh, layer 
archaeological layer, which in fact is um, contemporary from a very, very important uh, uh, refroidissement, I mean, we become more and more dry, more and more cold. But this uh, layer a uh, super, super post. Okay, we have seen, we, ah, no, I go, excuse me. Yes, so we speak about this fauna, we have uh, this uh, large fauna, we, uh, we were exploited with the uh, men, so we, we have a choice. It's not so easy to, to demonstrate uh, precisely the um, evolution of the landscape because we have a BA um, and uh, we will discuss, of course, all about uh, what they do with this uh, animal. In fact, we have uh, this uh, uh, distribution of uh, all the fauna and uh, with uh, different uh, colors for each uh, species. Uh, you can, I can show that uh, at the base we will find mostly uh, reindeer and uh, horses. So it means this uh, very open landscape we will discuss. This uh, very nice uh, layer with uh, violin uh, uh, pots, uh, which uh, are only reindeer, so we will discuss. And just uh, uh, later, we have this uh, blue and, uh, blue and uh, uh, green uh, pots, which are uh, Servus and Dama. So it's change, completely change of, uh, of um, uh, uh, climate, probably, and environment around uh, the cave. And mostly humid, as uh, Kristen uh, explained explain you just before. And uh, this very thick um, layer, uh, which is called G, we can see by yourself that we have at least four uh, different layers uh, with mainly horses for these uh, different layers, but at the top of this, we have uh, red uh, pots, which are uh, muskox. And uh, the, the last uh, layer that we can uh, discuss is uh, mostly uh, Ovis uh, Amon, which, which was very, 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 uh, um, important in this uh, area. So, from the base, uh, probably you already see this uh, layer uh, with uh, Christian. You can see that uh, we have a specific uh, way to explore this uh, uh, method, uh, stratigraphic and archaeologic, it's uh, um, half, half uh, to manage this uh, section and understand what happened in this cave and uh, to uh, observe the, the, the surface of these uh, archaeological uh, layers. As you can see, in this case, we have mostly equids and reindeer, but as uh, as old as uh, five, uh, at least 500 uh, more and more um, use uh, with uh, this large and very large Ecos Mosbarantis and this uh, quite nice uh, reindeer, but with a very, very simple uh, antlers. It's, uh, this uh, ancient uh, aspect of this uh, of this reindeer. So just to remember you, the fauna uh, mostly canis, very few corn, mostly canis, which is wolf, 
we can see everywhere uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe uh, at that time. And this uh, little uh, vulpus, uh, very, we can say Corsac because it's uh, the, the vulpus from Asia, but it could be, uh, it could be Arctic fox uh, also. Les panthères, les panthères, les panthères, et euh, the most ancient uh, brown bear we know actually. So, just to show you some bones, it's very important to, to understand. And then, uh, the one of the best, as uh, we have said, we have speak about have spoke about uh, Ecos uh, Mosparensis. Uh, we have also this uh, reindeer with very, very simple, as you can see here, uh, antlers. Okay, voilà, this species, Servus et la Fouse, Dama Roberti, it's, uh, it's a mistake, excuse me, and this famous uh, Ovisam. So if Ovis Amon Antiqua, it's very important. We have in this layers uh, complete uh, skull. Um, you can see that it's very rare in this cave, but uh, in this case, we have a, a, a particular, particular um, carnivore layer, which means that uh, most of the bones which are collected and uh, in the cave uh, are, are collected with uh, carnivore, um, probably uh, Pandera, uh, it could be uh, Ursus, and uh, as uh, you can see, we have actually no hyenas in this uh, site and uh, it was uh, proposed that in this uh, specific period uh, hyena was not still here because the large hyena from lower pleistocene was already disappeared and uh, she it was not replaced with a crocuta we 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 as in Italy or as in uh, in uh, Greece, by example, uh, but uh, not still here. We can find crocuta with uh, the middle of the middle Pleistocene. Okay, Emitribus, of course, and oh, it's. A representation of this uh, of this area uh, for uh, the photo we have seen at the beginning it changed it really changed uh, because of course uh, we have uh, better we have uh, actually uh, trees and and wine of mostly wine but many trees along the river and so on. So this carnivore layer was uh, interesting for us because it's uh, the only uh, layer where we have a complete bones, <laughs> complete skull, complete <laughs> skeleton. And uh, it was <laughs> very nice to compare with uh, the archaeological layer where all is broken. Yes, this is this one. Layer, uh, layer L, uh, level L, okay. It's a very short uh, exploitation of the, of the cave. Uh, just, uh, we can say, one layer, as you can see on the photo, with many reindeer. So clearly this, uh, this uh, man uh, come and, uh, and kill uh, uh, probably migrate uh, um, tro uh, troupeau yeah? of uh, reindeer, herd of uh, reindeer, with uh, when we try to determine male and female, we, in fact, we, f we found mainly uh, adult female 
and a huge quantity of uh, young animals. So it uh, will be the end with the female and young, as you know, um, the male in general are not exactly in the same end when they are in, in the migration period. So it's, um, we can have the, all the nice mandibulas and especially for the youngs, they are not open because when the, this uh, uh, mandibule are so too young, they don't uh, broke, they don't uh, break the dental uh, nervous and uh, they stay complete. So it's also very good for paleontological uh, point of view. We can have a very nice uh, idea of this uh, uh, skeleton. And uh, this uh, reindeer, we are very uh, quite quite big and uh, and very simple uh, with for the antlers. Of course, in this case, uh, all the bones you can see are young, so they don't break the, break the bones. And the adult, as you can see just uh, at the top of the jaw, are broken with a speci specific uh, uh, notch and uh, probably to, to get the marrow. If, they are, if it's cold, it's very important. Uh, the percent, you can see the percent, of course, my, uh, I have something from uh, just uh, reindeer is uh, hidden with <laughs> something on my uh, on my on my screen, but you can see later. Uh, reindeer in this case are more than eighty percent of the bones, eighty percent. So it means it's uh, as passivant in uh, France. It's a very specific. Uh, um, uh, assemblage um, with um, cut marks with broken bones on adults and of course because we have very young uh, animals uh, we can determine the season and it's uh, early winter um, and it's a uh, very um, homogeneous and so it's a nice uh, story uh, not for the reindeer, but for the men, probably, yes. Uh, what is really interesting in this site, we have also some uh, servites, uh, servos, and uh, with um, some carnivores who come on secondary um, predators. It means they are not the first access uh, to, the, to the carcass. And uh, we have in this uh, layer what I call, <laughs> I'm not typologist, but I'm very proud of my ghost and axe, because eff effectively we can find many uh, uh, <laughs> special um, flakes uh, from the, the preparation of this uh, an axis, but no an axe. So we know that these people was uh, was uh, nomad and uh, and change very often of uh, place. It's another story in this camp. Uh, just later, it was uh, the if you remember the, my uh, stratigraphy, uh, it was the green and the blue uh, layer, quite thick with a good, nice quantity of uh, material and bones, uh, at least 12,000 bones uh, determined, and uh, mostly are uh, cervids and uh, uh, reindeer, no, red deer and um, dama, um, voila, fallow deer, fallow deer. Just. And it's the first layer when we can find this uh, famous uh, 
euh, Kat, euh, Félix Silvestris, euh, very nice and a little bigger than the one we know actually. But uh, in this in this layer, we have quite no change for the phonal list except this phalodia and this uh, uh, cat. Uh, we have no difference with the last uh, layer, but we have a large quantity of this rhino, but it's really uh, emeticus rhino, very nice and large quantity. And uh, uh, what change? No, no bison, more or less no bison and uh, very few equids. So we change, we propose this uh, representation. In fact, it's also a seasonal occupation, but we, we can say that we have more uh, occupation. It's a succ succession, as uh, we say, uh, palimpsest or um, a succession of occupation from the the autumn, uh, more or less, more or less um, long, uh, beginning of winter probably, and some of them are from June, June just uh, neonat and uh, and one year old. So it's at least two seasons we can uh, find in this case. This. Um, uh, in the in this place, we have mostly adults. We are male and female, though it's not the same uh, ideas as uh, the sol L just before. And uh, all is fragmented. We are in a clay, more clay uh, layer. So the the um, it's not so good for the preservation of the bones. So taphonomically, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult. Uh, the, the fragmentation or the fissuration of these bones is more important. But we have many cut marks everywhere, and no, all the bones are broken. All the bones are broken. So we go to the ensemble three, you know, we change all the layers. So this is a sol, as you, we show you sol J. So we make some, some step in the, some new step in the, in the time. Uh, four and 50,000 uh, years. 450,000 years. Et je pars en arrière. And we call it a long-term settlement. Why? We can explain, uh, we, we will try to explain you. As you have already seen when I want to uh, uh, cut this layer in many sites, in many sub-units, uh, we have a huge quantity of material, a huge quantity of material. In fact, in this G layer, uh, we have more than uh, 65 or 70 percent of all the material who was exploited in this cave. So it's huge quantity of material. And of course, we have some end axis, but the most important when we can find, when we can excavate, when we can see this layer, it is these pebbles, 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 fragment of pebbles, used pebbles, complete pebbles, uh, pebble tools, uh, chopper, chopping tool, fragment, and, and all sorts of pebbles. It's it could be the all the pebbles from the river just in in, uh, in the Verdoub layer valley, but it's very important. So 
these people are very important and all sorts of uh, all sorts of people in what we can say is that uh, in arago they are not uh, methodic they do what they want uh, as well uh, for fragmentation of bones and uh, for prepare this uh, very good and nice and useful tools but they do what they want they have not a typical um, plan uh, the raw material come from a long uh, long way and uh, probably uh, they can go and hunt also the, the different animal uh, in a large territory because we have here uh, collected a huge quantity of uh, species. Uh, of course, soldier is uh, very important for us because it's where we have found also 80% of the human bones. As Christian explained you, we have human remains in each layer from the base to the top, but most of them are in this famous uh, G layer. And um, we will speak more about this. This uh, funnel, we are though, at the top of the of the stratigraphy uh, with this uh, very huge and uh, with horses, muskox, ovis. This is the most important uh, uh, species. Uh, we cannot actually make a real difference between horses from this uh, uh, ensemble three uh, compared with uh, the large uh, sample of horses from the base. Uh, from the base, they probably are bigger, but it's also probably a question of dimorphism. In general, we have no dimorphism for these uh, equids, for the equids in general, actually, and so on. Uh, we have more or less no dimorphism. But in this case, and for this old species, we can determine um, a light uh, dimorphism. So uh, we have to continue to work uh, and um, this uh, for these horses, the, the, the muzzle is very short. Uh, it means that it's uh, really well adapted for the cold condition. It means, as you can see, a pony in the from Jetland or I don't know where, they have a very short muscle, a very short uh, skull. And uh, if you see uh, very nice uh, horses uh, uh, to, for the for the pariture, uh, for the course, I don't remember how For the, is they have a very nice and very long uh, skull, you know, very thin. This is uh, more. Um, dry and uh, and uh, hot uh, adapt, uh, adaptation to dry and hot uh, climate. This one are very short muscles. They have to keep the, the air and the hot air for their for their um, uh, skull. So Ah, we speak back to the human remains. So we found this human remains completely in the soil. They are, most of them are broken, open to, to get the marrow and with cut marks. Uh, and uh, they are absolutely 
as the uh, animal remains in the layers as an industry and completely. It means when you excavate in Arago Cave, you have all chance to find human remains. They are not in a sepulture or they are not in the special burial place. No, no, they are all everywhere. So many, many human remains, 151, so it's a quite nice collection. And we have uh, probably 20, 25, 26 uh, individuals. And you have a nice collection of uh, um, of mandibula, but we we can discuss with anthropologists to to explain. They explain uh, what is the significance of this uh, of this um, bones. But uh, what is also very interesting for us, and you can see. But the base of the base of this mandibula is uh, all nice uh, cut marks are done in uh, most of this uh, of these um, bones. Uh, so uh, you can have a nice idea of the dissemination of this uh, uh, anim uh, human remains uh, uh, with uh, bones. Uh, you have just a uh, uh, muskox uh, carpal just uh, there. So, of course, for us, it's always a fest, even it's very recent, very often, but uh, it's a fest, and we make, and in this case, uh, mud cast, and now, uh, of course, 3D uh, cast. So, it means that we can. Uh, um, work uh, with uh, complete uh, um, dis distribution of these human remains uh, in the layers. Okay, come back for the fauna. And in the uh, Solji, uh, we uh, say long term settlement. Why? Because, of course, when we have a huge quantity of, uh, of um, Herbivore, as you can see, ecus, bison, ovis, uh, uh, muskox, uh, reindeer, uh, emitragus, uh, cervus, uh, stephanorinus, uh, uh, except ecus, which is more or less uh, 34, 35 percent of the bones. All the other species are more between 6 and 50%. Uh, so they are well, all well represented. Well represented, why? Because as I say you, we have a huge quantity of bones. So for, <coughs> by example, Stefano Renus, here it's uh, more or less 9% uh, in this layer. 9% uh, means... Uh, uh, more than 250, uh, 50, um, no, 2050 uh, bones. So it means yeah, huge quantity of material to study. But what we can see is um, we have a quite nice. Uh, representation of all the bones. So um, the idea is uh, that uh, all the skeleton are uh, come complete in this uh, cave. So it's very nice to and to study these uh, different species. Uh, we have all the skulls, the ribs, the vertebra, the long bones, the flat bones, and the, also the um, phalanx and so on. So it's a paradise for a paleontologist, so it's good. But, um, and we are also, but we have uh, mostly adults individual. It means that uh, we have very few uh, old uh, animals and 
more or less few uh, young uh, animals. It, it means it's uh, really um, important. Uh, it's the adult um, uh, quantity. Okay, it's the same for all the herbivore species, except uh, perhaps uh, for uh, Stephanorinus, which uh, where we can see very, very old uh, one. But for all the other, we have mostly adults. Uh, so it's a choice. And this was the first uh, um, idea that uh, it was really a choice. Choice, not, uh, not a scavenging um, activity, but really hunting uh, activity, except for Stephanorinus. Okay, so in the left, it's, uh, it means the layer just uh, later. We are in this case, we can find something we, are, or, uh, we have already seen uh, during the temperate uh, period. Uh, we have uh, more than 70% uh, of the uh, same species, which is Ovis, and the second one is Emitragus. It means uh, at least 80% uh, of uh, this uh, specific uh, uh, goat and, uh, and uh, mufflon, uh, which uh, seems to be uh, speci specialized uh, hunting. It means in the cliff around the, and very local uh, utilization of the um, predation. predation. But you can see also that we have few males, females, but not so much uh, youngs. Up, up, up. So, mostly adult uh, and with a specific fragmentation. In this case, we have no complete bones in this layer. No complete bones. We have more than 12,000 uh, remains. So, traces are everywhere, and especially on uh, big animals, it means equids, uh, bison, and rhino. It's a very, very important uh, quantity of cut marks, we can say that. On uh, equid, uh, not complete long bones. We have mm, with this uh, huge quantity of uh, animals, and we have many uh, uh, skull, but also broken with this uh, cut marks. We we I say that is a scalp cut marks, and I probably. Uh, right, and also on the mandibula, on the phalanx, we have this cut mark. We they remove the the, the peel to to probably uh, broken uh, the bones and uh, and uh, eat the marrow. Uh, in the in the rhino, the question is very interesting because we have uh, very few uh, marrow oh, they have marrow but it's not easy and it's quite the same that in a large uh, herbivore as uh, uh, elephant or mammoth it means that uh, the long bones are um, full of uh, spongiosa uh, and especially uh, uh, for young and uh, adults uh, until uh, 40, 40 years. Uh, they, this spongiosa, it's, uh, in this uh, spongiosa, it's very difficult to get the marrow, of course, but they broke or they, they are broken. They are broken. All the bones, I already don't know. And even the, even the teeth. So, even the teeth, uh, they, they remove some flex 
for the teeth. So we already have seen that in uh, Asia for more or less the same period. So we, we can see in China, in south of China, and we can have a specific uh, um, destruction of these uh, poor teeth. And it's not easy for the paleontologist because uh, we prefer complete teeth to work, but it's uh, very nice for the archaeologist, of course, because it could be um, uh, interpreted as a, a utilization, a special utilization of this uh, of this mandibula, of this maxilla, of this teeth. It's the same for the long bones or large uh, proboscidean. Uh, here it's uh, probably elephant for the sole E, who, um, unit E, or E, e unit E, <laughs> or unit F, because uh, we have a huge quantity of indexes also in this layer, it's a particularity, but uh, we have also this uh, long uh, uh, elephant uh, diaphysis, fragment of diaphysis, which are re reworked and um, sometimes with a very little uh, place with uh, retoucher, so we consider it uh, could be a uh, utilization of this bone. In fact, we have seen that I say mammoth and uh, elephant in this uh, stratigraphy. Mammoth is the SAS in the base of the filling. Uh, elephant probably at the, the top of the filling. But uh, we never have teeth or oh, very little fragment. We just have a fragment of a task, but uh, also with a fresh uh, fragmentation of this task. And we have uh, this uh, long uh, uh, diaphysis. We were uh, collected as a diaphysis. We, it's the only uh, species where we haven't uh, the complete uh, skeleton, as I uh, explained you um, before. So we, we know this type of uh, utilization uh, in Asia, uh, in uh, many places in Asia for the for more, a little bit uh, earlier. And of course, in Italy, where we have this uh, wonderful uh, end axis, but uh, they were, they don't want to finish the the work and they let us just uh, this uh, sort of uh, point and uh, uh, large uh, flake, uh, large flakes. I, um, I, um, it's okay. I have finished. Thank you very much, Anne Marie. No, it was mixed with paleontology and archaeology. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Thank you.